you may know him as something else, but man, brother, man, you you are straight up a renaissance man. So, oh man, kind of kind of just just talk about that. Um, and and again, I want to give you your flowers, man. If I haven't you know said it publicly, man, but I appreciate man everything that you do um, for 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 that for our city for the scene. And even behind the scenes, man, helping me out, man, in, in so many different ways that a lot of people don't know. And then you just, you know, and, and it's being an inspiration, too. So if I never said that, I'm saying that to you now. So um, just jump right in, man. Let, let's let's chop it up, man. Let's talk hey, about hey, it. So hey, how do that make you feel being the OG around here? You know, first off, thank you, man, for the love and for, you know, giving me the flowers. Uh, I definitely appreciate this opportunity to be on your show, man. Uh, you know, definitely being a huge fan of what you're doing as well. So I see what you're doing and it both motivates me to continue just to be better overall. Uh, but uh, first off, thanks, thanks to God, bottom line. You know, without him, I wouldn't be here at all. And this vision that I've had years back, you know, before you had, you know, social media and YouTube and all this, you know, live stream this. This is something that I've been wanting to do for the longest time. I recall during my, my college years, I always said, man, you know what? I love sports. Uh, my family loves sports. I mean, I came out the womb already in, in, ingrained, you know, with sports in my veins from uh, my mom, from my grandparents, uh, rest in peace to my grandparents, to cousins, to uncles, you name it. They all mm -hmm. love sports. So it just, it was natural to me. And I was in college once again. And I'm like, man, I would love to have like a radio show. Cause you know, it wasn't no, let's, let's hit live on Facebook or whatever. I was right. like, I had visions of wanting to do a, maybe a radio show, a sports talk radio show. Because, you know, you listen to ESPN radio, mm -hmm. this, or you listen to, uh, now locally, you know, certain stations, KMOX and one on one ESPN, and you got this, you got that, and you have your opinions that you want to get out there, but it's hard to get in because you have so many people trying to call in and, you know, right. that, that call a number 23, you know, whatever it is. And it's like, well, I've always kind of been a person where I didn't want to always depend on somebody else. Like, let me go ahead and find my own my own path, my own way. So I found out about, uh, you can start streaming on Facebook. You can start going live on YouTube. You can start going live on here on, on that. So, uh, and I gotta give a, a big shout out to my boy, uh, Kelsey Sadal. Um, uh, I went right. to him. Shout out yeah. to Sadal. Yeah, man. So, we was over at Legacy Books and Cafe. You know, if, if you're from the Lou, you know about Legacy Books and Cafe. So uh, I, I was doing a lot of DJing uh, for Legacy Books on Friday nights. And back then, on Friday nights, it'd be jam-packed at Legacy mm -hmm. Books. I mean, you're talking about cars going all the way down Delmore. You may have to park on Union, whatever, whatever, whatever it was. It was a big deal. So G give me a year. Uh, give, give me a year. Like, like what year? So uh, in regards to doing the sports talk show, it's been five years ago. April 2017 was when we had our first show. But the conversation started around January of that year. So January 2017, me and Sadal talked about it. I had a gig. And I'm like, hey, man, I'm thinking about doing a, a sports talk show. And this is when I, I, I first started to meet Sadal. So it wasn't like I knew him for a long time. He was... um. Before he got to the DJ and he used to watch the door. So right. I had him to watch the door for an event. Then I started seeing him more and more after that. And he talked about sports. And I'm like, you know what? You seem like you have a passion for sports, you know, similar to how I do. Like, I'm thinking about doing a sports talk show. So <laughs> the show was was called The Platform, uh the, the Platform with Smooth and Sadal. It wasn't like the platform sports talk show. It was the platform with Smooth right. and Sadal. And started off, uh, you recall, you know, my old my old spot now, but in, in the basement. Uh, before you saw tables and before you saw uh all the backdrops and and whatever else and all the fancy microphones that I have now, it was just me and him in a big basement, no backdrop at all, but my old Cardinal jersey behind me. And his old Normandy. <laughs> um, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me right, see if I can, if I can, uh, if I can share this right here. 
There you go. <laughs> I mean, look at look at how young I was, man. About about uh, you know, five years ago, just just get started the platform, we just moved this and all, and that's where it all started. We had oh, two, we had two bar stools, uh, uh, big, you know, the tall elbow microphones, and not mm -hmm. no you know, podcast mic. We just had some two short mics, had a small little webcam, and. We went at it, you know, and things had just, like I said, to the grace of God, things had just grown and blossomed to where we are now. And like like I said before, it means a lot to me to hear you say what you said about um, just me being like the, the old the OG now and um, right. inspiring others because that's the reason why I had this show. Because, right. no. I, I, you know, I don't think about just me. I think about others and getting them an opportunity to have their their thoughts put out there in a spot where they feel like they can go ahead and uh you know give them give us their opinions on whatever sports topic it is just give that opportunity that platform to go ahead and do that and it's been a blessing right and and even just looking at that man i'm glad that uh that, that you able to, and then even for the people that's listening, for the people that, that are watching, that sometimes people may think that, you know, you might have just all of a sudden fell into some success, but being able to see a picture like that, seeing the growth, man, right. that's that's a lot of days persevering. Because at any right. point, you could have just said, you know what, I'm, I'm through with doing this. I don't want to do it no more. But the love and the passion kept you going to where, you know, you're going strong now after five years. What, what do you think that started from? I mean, first off, is is sports. You know, sports never dies. You know, what I'm saying it's it's like it's the ultimate reality show. <laughs> you right. know, so it's gonna always be so something much drama. It's always some drama. It'll always be something to talk about. And I know how much I love sports. How much it means to me. And it's been, like I said, ingrained in my family. Uh, but in regards to keep going, because I I believed in it, and I seen, and I've already seen it, but. The vision was I could see a lot of uh, people coming together, which now, as you see, I have the Man Cave, which you're on. I have Ladies Night. I have the regular sports talk show. Uh, being able to have guests on, and I know a lot of people uh, who have been affected by this may not want to hear this, but like COVID really helped us out because we was at a time, and you know, because you were coach yourself. A lot of people weren't available, you know, a lot during the time that I, I may have wanted them to to have them come to the house and do the interviews mm -hmm. and everything. But once COVID hit and it stopped stuff, and then all of a sudden here comes uh, this, you know, Zoom got big, uh, you know, got bigger. And then you had this uh, streaming site, you had this. And so the opportunities start coming for coaches, uh, for professional athletes, for whomever to come over to the house or once again, start doing stuff like we're doing now, virtually the opportunities are coming and it has been, it just catapulted to a blessing. But I just always feel like when you start something and you have a vision for it and a passion for it, don't stop it. Keep pushing. And I have people like yourself, other professional athletes and coaches say, Hey man, I see what you're doing with this show. It's amazing. Uh, don't, don't stop it because it's needed. And I, I feel that, and that's what drives me uh, to be at a point where I'm at now, where, like I said, people like yourself are holding down your own podcast and, you know, you, you're doing your thing. I just love to see other people to be able to have their happiness and shine and know that, hey, th there is a way. You know, uh, you, sh yeah. you shouldn't have the mentality where I can't do this, there's no way possible. No, there is a way. It's just all about how serious are you about taking it to that next level. Yeah, one 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 thing about your show and everything that you're doing, man, that, that I really like is the networking tool that that's associated with it. Like you right. bring together, man, so many different people from every, all different walks of life. It don't matter and where you from come people, from. don't matter where you come from, and then your knowledge of of the sport. You may have people that may be just you know they may have an expertise in basketball, like myself, but I'm able to get on with Sadal and Stan, and we and you know we can chop it up and find the common lane because. You know, sports bring us all together. This, these are probably the same conversations that we have inside the 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 uh, 
the, I was going to say the teacher's lounge, but inside the cafeteria or inside uh, or the barber shops, you know, on the park life, we just sitting out, just, you know, throwing a few back. We talking sports. We talking about who's doing this, who's doing that. And then building a, the, of the relationship. So it's the networking right. part. And then the relationship part that I think, man, our city, man, desperately needs yes. when you have people that, you know, just is nothing wrong with supporting somebody else. Um, I think man. I think the biggest thing is like, can you be a blessing to somebody else? And I can right. truly honestly say, Smooth, you've been a blessing to me. And all I try to do is pass that blessing on to someone else and to, you know, just like you help me out behind the scenes. If someone calls me up and needs some advice, boom, I'm there. And, and not being so closed in and thinking that. It's only one lane and only one person can hog up the whole spotlight. What, what you what you think about that? Man, it, it's it's a blessing to me, man. I'm just doing guys' work, bottom line, because there is someone that I needed to, you know, maybe lean on to get something. I would hope they'd do it for me like I do it for them. And once again, it's just all about going back to what you said about different uh the having stand here and Sadal helping you out there. That's what I wanted. You know, it didn't matter if you were white, if you were Asian, if you know, whatever. If, if if you know sports, you don't have to know all the sports in regards to one person knowing everything. That's why I have, right. you know, Joe, a woman, a white woman. She's she know her and, and she know her stuff, boy. Exactly. You know, <laughs> well, you know, have Stan who's you know, he's young as well. And uh, but he he has a certain way about his passion and, and about how he see things. So I, I want to add that because you don't want to have Everyone's saying yes. Right. You know, that's not going to keep the show going. You want people who, who have different uh, different energy, different aspects, different perspectives. T-Bone, you know, he, he know, he, you know, he, he, he's a wrestler. You know, he's, mm -hmm. he's been in that, in that uh, area for his, uh, his, pretty much all his life. You know, Sadal, he has a way about him, and, but he knows about that football a whole lot too. Um, if you look at Ladies Night, Annie, uh, she knows her football. She knows her basketball. You know, you can't just say whatever and think she'll know what it is. She will break it down and make you look stupid. <laughs> you know, right. Bunny, uh, I've known her since college. So, and, and this is a true story. We uh, we was like leaving out from uh, like a college night out kind of the event, whatever. Mm -hmm. And but I knew that she always, you know, knew sports. And she used to work for, uh, I believe, a radio station back in the day uh, doing sports talk. And I'm yeah. like, you know what? We, we need to come together and do a, a radio show. So, so I had this vision even with her in mind. So when she got at me about three years ago saying, hey, I'm available. I know you're doing the sports talk show. I love to be on. Say less. Boom. Right. You all, I know knew, I knew you're going to be a natural. And now she's holding things down, leading the way with ladies night. Then being able to now say that I have, who would have thought? I, I'll have a Miss Missouri of 2022 as one of my panelists on ladies night shouts out to lady uh, so excuse me to uh to michaela money mcgee you know yeah. formerly with fox 2 miss missouri now she's about to run for miss usa and she's on the sports talk show and she loves it you know the chemistry everything is out there so it's it's been a blessing to me and i consider everyone who is a part of what i'm doing not just my people, no, I, 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 I say their family. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because first off, right now, right now, no one's getting paid to do this. So people could have been like, you know what? Uh, I, I may not do this, so I don't want to do it every week. But I've had people now who have been dedicated. You right. know, Lace Night just had a one-year anniversary uh, back in early January. Uh, once again, the sports talk show, five years strong being able to have, you know, so many people to believe in me, to trust in me, and to, for them to see that I'm serious about this thing. That's what it's all about. It's, it's a family environment. I love to get everyone together and just be able to discuss what we love. And that's what it's all about, man. Right. So so let's just let's kind of break it down just a little bit. So let, let's just talk about just the evolution of the show. Um, so it's always been you and Sadal just coming right off, right off the bat. And then um, like, how, how did it evolve to where it is now? And and uh, 
did you have any other visions for it or if you or are you happy with it? And, it? and I feel like, man, again, having those pictures and, and access to things how it used to be just gives motivation for someone just to keep grinding. And you can see growth in that, you know, mm-hmm. that is not the end product. You know what I'm right. saying? Like it's just it's, it's gold in, in being able to just see growth. So mm-hmm. kind of talk about the evolution of the show. So, yeah. So once again, me and Sadal. Uh, we, you know, we had our rundown of what we want to discuss. You know, of course, we want to have the biggest thing was getting people to engage in our show, bring the comments so we can, you know, get their point of views and we can interact with the people. That was our main thing. Um, not saying we never have business of having guests, but it, we just right. wanted to start off something. We, you know, you can't just start off the first show and have 10 million guests. You had to start building from the ground up. And that's what we did. No, our first few so shows more, more of a debate format was it more in, in terms of something like that when your vision was it when, when you started off uh me and him me and Sadal, uh it was a few things that we probably had a lot of similarities to uh in regards to our our opinions uh and that's when we want the people to engage so if they didn't agree with some of the things that we you know had discussed then boom let, let's debate uh you know we may have had our our, our few debates and everything. Uh, people would comment, see it, whatever, and then that's when re- that's when Stanton, uh, he started chiming in on shows, and I know he was cool with you know uh, with Sadal. I've done shows with Stanton because he's a spoken word artist, and now he's a he's an artist, he's a singer, spoken word artist, host the whole nine, and so it started off with just me and Sadal talking sports, having a, a rundown about what we will be discussing. And trying to interact with people, you know, sometimes we didn't have a, a lot of comments coming in, but me and Sadal still did our thing because we just love to discuss different things about sports. Right. And then, uh, so they, uh, excuse me, Stan came along, and he was he first started off commenting a lot. Then he came over to the house, and he started joining us, and I and I just saw something in Stan, you know, his perspective, his way about it, uh. I always say how he has like the gift of gab and I'm like, and his personality. So I'm like, you know what, Sadal, I think we need to go ahead and see about inviting Stan to be on the show. Cause I just felt like he was just a natural with it. And that's how that came about. So it was just about just me and Sadal just really getting all point of views across. That was the main focus before anything else. So, um, so no, so I was just trying to figure out too, is when, when you have this thought process of, of forming, um, um, a sports show, who, who were some of the creators or some of the people that inspired you from just watching things? Is it, was it a certain show? Was it a certain people? Or did you take bits yes. and pieces from different folks and kind of try to, you know, jumble it all up and see what works? I had to give credit to definitely one-on-one ESPN because okay. it beat the, that was one of the reasons why I wanted to do the show. I listened to them every day, all day. From uh, back then, it was Randy Carricker and Marco Farr and Bob Ramsey. And then, of course, uh, Chris Duncan joined. Then, you know, now it's, you know, BT and thoughts to them. But it all started with all that listening every day to mm-hmm. one-on-one ESPN. That so was that was your, go- that was your go-to. Yeah. That, was, you that, got was up. that was it. And, and I used to listen to... You know, Bernie Miklas, you know, when I mean, he was on one on one ESPN mm-hmm. back then with um, uh, who, who passed away, Brian Burwell. They had a show together back in the day before Brian Burwell passed. Back then, Camel Wax, listen to them. Uh, my granny, when I uh, used to wake up and get breakfast in the morning, she would have Camel Wax on. So I've always listened to sports talk radio, but one on one ESPN really gravitated to me. And I'm like, man, I want to have my own, you know, way of getting my word out my my voice is my opinion so it, it just happened to be perfect when i met you know sadal and i'm like you know what it's time for me to take my own lane and, and do this so definitely had to give props to one-on-one espn for just uh being being available uh, especially on the fm radio where you have to worry about all the static like you do on the am dials you know right. and <laughs> it, it just been incredible to me so Nothing guys give props to one on one ESPN. That was probably my biggest motivation right there, inspiration to go ahead and do my own thing. Also, Stephen A. Smith, he used to have his own radio show on uh on ESPN radio. So I would hear that as well. Uh and then now I would like to say, because of the platform sports talk show, 
you got you know up and smoke going on. You got the mm-hmm. uh, you got the bar, you got the shop with LeBron James. Now you're saying it's because of me, but I'm just saying. Then you yeah, got no, man. Like, uh, you know Quinn Richardson and D Mile. I mean, and in, in, uh, yeah, Darius Miles and them. So you have these different podcasts and the shows. I'm like, yeah, I, 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 I'm I'm gonna go ahead and say it. They got a little bit of the platform sports talk show out, but it's all good though. But but it's it's a nice space to be in. Um, I think you know even just me growing up like likewise, um, being being kind of like a sports nerd, being kind of like you know diving into everything for for myself. And and you can kind of talk on this because the first time that I I can say that I met you or even just heard about you was you playing basketball. Yes, sir. For Sean. So yes, uh, kind of talk, talk about, about that. that. So so again, I'm I'm diving into. Because me being the sports geek that I am and, and just obsessed with numbers and stats and data, I can memorize pretty much at the time, pretty much everybody that I played, they roster, their height, the average, how many points did the highest point, all of these different things. And so what stood out for me is I'm looking at Vashon and I see a freshman on a varsity team. And I'm like, man, who is this dude? So, you know, I'm trying to size myself up. Mm-hmm. So kind of talk about that, man. How how was growing up and, and playing sports was was uh basketball a big focal point for you yes. going into high school? And how did you get noticed in order to be on one of the top teams in the in the state of Missouri and, and you know questionably like one of the top national teams at that at that age? So I started playing basketball, I want to say when I was around second or third grade. And uh I started off at my old school, uh, my grade school was Gateway Christian School. And it was a school that had two separate buildings. One was from like nursery to fourth grade. And then the second building was fifth grade to 12th grade. Very small school. Uh, was this Lafayette? Lafayette about 44? Yep, that's it. That's that's Rodney Vine. Right. Rodney Vine. Yes. No, okay. All right. Now, now, Rodney Vine. Right. And so, and, and keep a pen there in regards to his name. But uh, yeah, so that's when basketball started for me. And it was this league for, for youngsters. It was called Bitty Basketball. And for the youngsters, they had like the smaller hoops. And now, mind you, the gym that we had, it was super small, like super small. The ceiling was probably about maybe eight feet high. So you couldn't really do an arch the whole time. But like I said, we had hoops that was maybe like six feet, if that, for the youngsters. I think I may have played maybe one or two games before uh, Coach Watkins, uh, Travis Watkins, shouts out to him. Uh, I probably had to say to this day has been my favorite coach I've ever had. Mm. Uh, but going back, uh, he he saw something in me. He like, you know, you different. I want to have you play with the older kids, playing with the, you know, the, you know, while I'm, I'm in third grade, third or fourth grade, I'm playing with, you know, six, seven, great. You know what I'm saying? Playing a higher level because he saw something different than me. And there, that, there we go. So then when I went to the fifth through uh, 12th grade school, I was already playing with, you know, higher level people. And so my school, I was able to play varsity when I was in just the seventh grade. I was already playing varsity ball at Gateway Christian. So I'm already playing with, you know, uh, freshmen and sophomores and some seniors when I'm only in the seventh grade. That's how, you know, that's how real it was for me yeah, back you, in Gateway you know, Christian. You know, I got I to gotta, I gotta try to drop this, this bomb right here on you. So, <laughs> <laughs> y'all, we, All right, we so, so man, so, we're going to yeah. drop the bombs on you, man. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. So, so, dang, so, so, so how do that? How do that work? As far as that, they don't count that, do they? Or hey, once you this, make the team, you, hey, in in, in, in in that league, uh, excuse me, for that school, okay. because you was in the same school once again with, once again five to twelve, all the way up. No, yeah, if you good it's based on skill level, you can play. Bottom line, ain't no no yeah. matter what grade you in, you can play and. Coaches, uh, so from Mr. Watkins to um, the varsity coach at that time, Mr. Artie Rankin. I had one game against, oh, God, what school was that? Oh, I can't recall the school. But 
I was doing stuff. I was doing Steph Curry stuff before Curry came around. Hmm. I mean, I'm shooting from almost half court. I mean, I was on fire that game. And the coach, the uh, Artie Rankin, who was once again the uh, the basketball coach for the varsity team, doing I believe halftime of the, uh, of the J, excuse me, the, uh, the the junior high game, he pulled me to the side like, I want you to be on varsity. So he pulled me to the side doing my own game like, mm. I want you to be on varsity. So. I started playing on varsity, and that's when I started being on the team with Ronnie Bond, uh, DeMarco, uh, DeMarco Dene, Mike Stapleton. Uh, uh, you might recall you know, them guys. I remember. Hey, look, they they Man. they smashed me my freshman year. Ron dunking all on us, like. Man. In the in the Alton tournament, man, as a freshman, I'm looking like, man, yeah. who is this beast up here, man, clowning on his rim like this? And and I always say, you know, because of the school, us being such a small school, we was kind of like that best kept secret. You know, we, we didn't have the, you know, the the, the big pub like of a shine school and like a C, you know Webster Groves and uh Chaminade and you know CBC, you know whatever it was because we was such a small school. But y'all knew about Rodney Bond, though, you know, and he had some major offers. So Rodney Bond had his jersey, uh, retired. Pretty much, uh, we had like this trophy room, and he and Christina Jackson, she was like the best hooper ever in Gateway. They had both of their jerseys pretty much like hung up in this trophy room. The only two people, huh. and that was my goal. Like before I left Gateway, I wanted to be with them because I felt like I was on that path. Like I had so many people, they were treating me like you know. A lot of people treat me like guy, like dude. Right. You know, this is it. So, um, but then after my eighth grade year, and my mom, she went to the V. Um, okay. My cousin, um, shout out to uh, my uh, my cousin Rick Simpson. He played for the V, like class of eighty eight, eighty nine, eighty six, something like that. And then his father Ronald uh, Slim Simpson, he was a coach with Floyd Irons. So, of course, but Sean was in our blood. And I used to go to games back in the day. You know, I went to those normally tournaments and seeing but Sean play against uh, Cardinal Ritter back in the day, Chris Carrell and Lauren Woods and Jahadi White and all of them. I've been to all of them games out of town and, you know, in Columbia or wherever they were at. So I've always followed them since I was a kid. So I knew about the V. But, you know, at the time, I was, you know, starting my own path at, at Gateway. And I felt like I was going to be that next big thing. I mean, I had visions of, you know, hey, I'm going to get these these D1 schools to follow me at, at Gateway, mm -hmm. you know. But then my mom made the decision to go ahead and go to uh, to Vashon. So I'm like, well, hey, why not? Because I know that the V is the V. Like, mm -hmm. if you want to be noticed, that's it. You know, go right. to Vashon. So I go in and freshman year, I'm coming in, balling. Uh, shouts out, excuse me. Shouts out to Coach Russell Orms, a uh, great guy. He yes. played. Ru Ru Russell was my first first grade uh, uh, gym teacher, and man, to really? this day, man, that's man, that's that's my my look. He'd tell you back in the day, man. He okay. remember me. That's yeah. what's up. Yeah. So you know, he, uh, I was on his team, uh, you know, JV team and everything, and you know, we we was killing it. You know, I was doing my thing, and then. Uh, from what he told me, Floyd Irons saw enough, and you know Floyd knew who I was too. You know, because of me being, you know, uh, you know, uh, him and my mom were in the same class together, so right. he already knew. It was just a matter of time, but he he pretty much saw enough and wanted me to join the varsity team during the season, which I feel to this day, and I said this on one of my past shows when I had Russell Arms on. I feel to this day that. I wish I would have just stayed the whole year, my freshman year, and played the whole season. I think I played maybe I don't know five or six games, and right. uh, the, the very the very first game that I played with <laughs> with uh, with varsity, I believe it was the same game that we lost to VAP at VAP. It was that exact night when we lost. Serious? Yes. The men's varsity, the varsity team, oh, excuse me, man. lost 
at Val, uh, you know, Brian Baker's team. Yeah, yeah. And Big Leslie, all man, we followed that whole yeah. year and couldn't yeah. believe that, you know, that, 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 that happened. But, yeah. you know, everybody was considered young coming into and it was early too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So and like I said, I I, I wish I would have went on and just stayed that whole freshman year and just played that out and then came in and it worked my butt off the summer and then leading to my sophomore year, then being ingrained into varsity because i felt like when i moved to varsity i i don't i wasn't really prepared to really mm-hmm. be the 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 the, the free saunders that i was at the you know back in gateway and starting off jv now i'm, I'm going to varsity i you know didn't know the plays you know sometimes the learning curve that you got to exactly. get adjusted to and exactly. it's kind of like everybody else kind of in a groove right Just- right right so you know, it was uh, definitely a challenge. I, I I didn't feel like I was really myself. And then sophomore year, you know, came in, uh, you know, I, I probably said I had my best off season ever in regards to like feeling the best. I, I felt so good. Like first day of school, I'm in class, tank top on, no shirt. I'm I'm showing out like I'm in the best shape of my life. It was this one night, uh, I don't know where it came from, but I was just jumping out the gym. You know, I'm, I'm like, what's going on here? I'm dunking it right in front of the coach. I'm like, okay, you know, let's go, let's go. Now, I was always pretty much like a small forward uh, shooting guard. That was my position. You know, uh, Floyd Irons, he wanted me to be point guard. And that was never my thing. You know what I mean? I, I, I had the skill uh, not, I, but I wouldn't say I had the point guard skill in regards to controlling the ball, directing the people. Team, right? yeah. You know what I'm saying? That that wasn't my position. And, of course, right there you had Joe Sheldon. So Joe Sheldon was already, you know, mm-hmm. the, the the shooting guard. And that wasn't going to change, you know. Then uh, this is going to see him at my freshman year. So, you know, you had guys like Joe. You had Johnny Cooper. Uh, Quentin Stovall, Anthony Love. I'm sorry, uh, Robert Love. So you had a lot of guys who were who were already established point guards and shooting guards. So Floyd wanted me to, you know, once again, pretty much be like a point guard. But I knew that that really wasn't something that I believed, you know, I can do. You know, even to this day, I still feel like if I was put in a better position to succeed then things maybe would have been different. Right. So once again, going to my sophomore year, uh, I really I wasn't playing a lot. Sophomore and junior year, I wasn't playing a lot. And people would be like, man, you know, Fred, you you cold, man. You, you know, like people would say my job was just as good as as Joe Sheldon. You know, people would say that. Uh, and then here comes eventually, you know, Jimmy McKinney and Jesse Akins and Nick Kern and, you know, man, man. So you had like a whole new group coming in and they were already established from what they uh, did in a past, you know, like AAU tournament or coming something. In, yeah, they, they were all highly talented coming in. Exactly. You know, and, and they weren't so, going to come in to play or even go B team. They were coming in to play right, and play six exactly. minutes. Right. So it was like, the star that I had coming in from Gateway to Vashon was starting to diminish because I wasn't able to really, you know, I didn't have my confidence uh, like I, I wanted to have when I played for the V. And and I, I never really was able to get into the right position, the right everything for me to be the free Saunders that I thought that I would be and hold things down uh, at, at, at Vashon. And then when it comes to you, I remember, you know, me, not, not meeting you, but, you know, seeing you as, you know, uh, on the other, on the other side. Right. And I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, this, this Brian Turner, I, I heard about this cat. And I'm mm-hmm. like, when I saw you, I'm like, this is how I should be. That's how I saw you. You know, you never right. knew this, but when I, when I, when I played against you, when I saw you, I'm like, this is what I wanted to, to be when I went to the V, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Mark Jones, you know, from, from Gateway, you know, right. same thing with him. You know, I'm like, this is where the level that I want to be at. And I never got to be in that position. So I did kind of, you know, envy y'all too, because I'm like, man, you know, y'all at that spot where I thought that I would be 
when I went to uh to Bashan because that's how I pretty much was at Gateway. I was that dude. Uh mm-hmm. but once again, uh and I'm I'm not gonna say it's all on, you know, on Floyd. You know, uh maybe I should have did some things differently in regards to my my work habits, you know, say, you know, maybe I should take right. more time to do this to, to develop that. So like I said, I'm not gonna say it's all on him. Um but for a minute for a period of time after I decided to step away from the uh, from the team after my junior year. And we ended up going to the state, but we lost that year. But still, after that time, my my love for basketball actually kind of left for a minute because I felt like it, it, just, it just didn't hit me the same way anymore. Right. And, and that's when uh, – and, and I always loved baseball as well. But I started seeing I baseball. Say, yeah. Yeah, but I started seeing baseball more of a love – uh, and appreciation then I start for basketball in regards to playing basketball. Um then I also played tennis while I was in at, at the V. Like tennis, what the V have a tennis team? Yeah. I didn't know right. either <laughs> until uh Russell Orms told me about it. And then shouts out to my old history teacher, uh Mr. Keith Northway. He told me about a soccer team. I'm like, we got a soccer team? And so I played that and I actually uh was like all PHL in soccer and in baseball. The sport that I thought that I'd begin the acclaim was I thought would be basketball, but ended ended up being uh, baseball and and tennis. And then right. of all the sports, who would have thought of all the sports that I would actually get a scholarship because of soccer? Mm-hmm. So no, I was just gonna say that just and and that speaks to just you being the Renaissance man that you are right now and and not being afraid to you know admit that hey this this is not working right now let me try something else and then uh, not just uh, uh, succeeding in in that next but just going above and beyond and then looking at it like all right let me try something else because now you kind of you you overcame that hurdle of just fear of and a lot of times that is when people don't want to start nothing new because we kind of have tunnel vision and we're just going hard this way and right. not, not, not being, you know, having that confidence to say, man, if I tried this, something else, I may have some, some success in this, but that speaks, do you think that that speaks to the type of person that you are and it develop the type of man that you are today, not being afraid to try different things, no matter what the outcome may be? Most definitely. Cause I feel like I, I wasn't brought in this world just to do one thing. You know, I've been blessed to be able to, that's why I call myself Mr. Jack of all trades. You know, I, like I, won't, I won't never claim to be the best in everything that I do, but just know that I can definitely put myself in a lot of different situations and I won't be limited to just one thing. And it's all started back in high school playing different sports to what I'm doing now as a producer, as an engineer, as a DJ, as a host. Uh, and one of the things I always wanted to do, which is crazy, you recall Tony Robbins, the, the uh, motivational uh, speaker. Speaker. speaker, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like he wanted to, you know, travel all around the world and have these engagements and be in front of mass, mm-hmm. mass people and uh, inspire people. Well, this is my way to inspire because I'm able to have people like yourself and, and other professional athletes. That was once again once COVID hit and we start having people come more people come on the show all of a sudden like it just came like like crazy like every week for like six months straight i had different guests every wednesday and i started about just you know talking about what they were doing and you know in sports but then being able to get their their story out you know from how you came from this person that was in uh, in, in in North City in the hood to now you're getting drafted, in or oh, first you getting the scholarship, then you're getting drafted, and now you're making millions of dollars. Something happened between the before and the now, you know, and that's what I really wanted to captivate in regards to having our guest on because people, there's some people out there that can relate, you know, oh, what I'm saying no just always like that. Like when I had Devin Alexander on, I had no idea that he was contemplating suicide. He was taking pain, you know, uh, 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 painkillers and stuff like that. And for people who are in the situation like him, who's an upcoming basketball star, upcoming 
wrestling, okay. you know, person who's who's going through depression. You know, yeah. they I, I may have saved someone's life because they saw a certain person on the show that they can relate to mm-hmm. and be like, you know what, it's going to be okay. That's that that's my Tony Robbins. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah, right no, now. that's that's real. Yeah, no, and, and and we ain't through writing the book yet. Like that's oh, that's no. you you gonna keep doing. You know, it's it's oh, always yeah. we gonna we, we gonna we gonna drop that one on there. It's, we we gonna keep it going because uh, that's I mean I, I kind of want to kind of transition into that to where uh, just being the jack of all trades and and kind of gravitating to music. How did you get into the music? How did you get into engineering? Like how did you get into that space to where you know. Like I said, you you're not afraid to even try and attempt to do things. So where did that start? Where, where it come from? Musically, family once again. Uh, I didn't know it till old till I got older. But my late grandfather was in a drum and bugle corps back in the day. Uh, my uncle, shouts out to him, uh, Norman. He was in a drum and dr- doing drums in the band, but also was a DJ. And he told me that till I got to DJing. Uh, my cousin Rick once again, he did some DJing. So it's like sports. Music has been in my family. My mom, uh, she's a singer, used to be in the choir, holding things down. She's an alto. Uh, same thing with my my granny. She used to sing. So we've had sports. We've had music in us. And what's crazy in high school, I never took band. I, I always wanted to. And mm-hmm. I wish I did because I would actually know how to play, like the piano and play. You know, like I, I know, I don't know any music. I, mean, I can't read music at all. You know, I'm kind of like like Nick Cannon was on Drumline. I okay. I've been blessed to be in a position where I can see things, and and, and start to like get my own feel, and boom, uh, oh, there yeah? you go. Yeah. So I, I never knew how to read music. I was never taught in regards to music. I learned things on the fly. So uh, it's just a feel. Yeah, it, it's always been a feel for me. So like I said, I I may not be the best in everything, but you know that I can still hold my own. And I, and I have my own lane. Not saying that I won't be, um, I won't be opposed to learning, you know, from so and so. Bring it on, let let's go. But I've been put in a situation. I've been blessed to be able to see things and and get more of a feel. And that's how I've been able to do things musically. Same thing with engineering and and doing podcasts and doing whatever. I see videos on YouTube, or I see I can go I can go somewhere. And just watch other DJs doing things. I'm like, hmm, he did that. Hmm. So it's not, about, it's not about me doing the same thing that person doing. It's about how can I incorporate my way, my style, and get mm-hmm. people going. You know, I may not always want to scratch and you know, you know, whatever when I'm DJing, but I know one thing is I'm gonna get y'all up and dancing, and be like, oh, wait a minute, when that beat came on, when that beat comes on. When that song come on, oh, that's it. Mm-hmm. Because I love to get the feel. It's not about me playing what I want to play. It's about the feel of the crowd and 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 and, and what they and, and and what they want, pretty much. Mm-hmm. So, just in regards to Mr. Jack of all trades, and just in regards to uh, sports and everything else that I, I've touched, man, uh, I just been blessed to be in a situation where I just have a feel of certain things, and I I go off that. Uh, I, I you like in church. Uh, I'm a drummer at my church. Been mm. doing that. I was going to ask you that. Did did you drum in, in church or did you play any instruments in church? Yeah, so I'm a drummer at my church, and uh, shouts out to to Richie Williams. Uh, he he he's a former drummer at the church. He's uh probably like the pillars of a Washington Metropolitan Amy Zion Church. And he gave me the opportunity. I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm learning to play drums. Do you mind if I can play, you know, on 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 some Sundays? You know, he would start off playing like, you know, the 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 song before the sermon. And after that, I may fill in a little bit and play a little bit or whatever. But each time I was playing, I was learning more. And the reason why is because I started to be in the band. So shouts out to my boys, Matisse and Cordiel. Uh, we started this band called uh, Soul Era. Okay. And I told Matisse, I was like, you know, yeah, you know, I, I'm learning the drums. And I'm like, he was like, cool, come on with it, you know. So his house, he had everything. He had all the instruments. Drums, guitar, bass, keyboard, whatever it is. He, like, he's a huge, like, musician, 
a fan. He loves Stevie Wonder. He loves, you know, Sly and the Family Stone. He loves it all. Okay, bottom line. And he had everything in there. So between learning to do things at the church and then hooking up with the guys, all of a sudden the skills start getting better. I started seeing how T's doing certain things with the drum. I started seeing how Cordier was doing certain things. And I started seeing how, you know, because the band eventually evolved to bigger and better things. So I'm able to like really, okay, this guy was doing this. Hmm, let me play around with that and see how I can, you know, mm-hmm. do my own thing. So it wasn't like an actual lesson, like, hey, how did you do that? It was just me looking at other people and then incorporating that to what I was doing. So now all of a sudden, years down the line, you know, Richie started to fall back and took on, you know, a different role in regards to audio and uh, audio visual, which I helped them out, you know, more in regards to enhancing our, our church services every week now, because I'm part of the, uh, the social media team there, social media and slash audio team. But uh, now, you know, I'm doing my thing at church, and I, it, it it just so much going on, so many blessings because of just loving what you do and and letting God use you. So when I'm on drums, I may not be like a certain drummer because I go off the field, and if I'm feeling a song a certain way. That's God allowing me to praise him in my way. You know, I may not be talk like about, that. Talk you know, about I, may, it. I may not be that that shouting, thank you, you know, you know, and, and, you know, whatever, because I'm going to be praising the Lord with my hands and, and on the drums. And I, I may right. do an extra beat or I may do a little loud because I'm thankful for everything that he has done for me because he, he could have looked over me and moved on to somebody else, you know? But without him, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be able to have people like you, uh, you know, reaching out to me or, you know, us, because, like, I can I can call you a friend. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, from right. the time, no. from, you know, from the slew game, like, when you and I went to that, that, that slew game, like, I had a whole different uh, appreciation for you. You know what I'm saying? Because we really vibed, you know, and yeah, no, no, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. you know, so it's like, man, this dude who I've, I've always looked up to back in high school, then to, to, to get you on the show and get to know you, and now we're doing things like this together. And you know, I know we're going to have future events where we go to like a wrestling event in the future and the whole right, time, right? You know, it's just we, life, life is about relationships, right. man. Exactly. That's that's how I feel. Exactly. It's like, you know, uh. You know, we go through this journey. You don't want to just go through this journey alone by yourself. And just again, we were just talking about just somebody hogging up all of the spotlight and you hogging up things. That that ain't the right way to live. You know what I mean? Can you be a blessing for somebody else? Can you be a blessing right. to others? Like that's how I view things and how I look at things, you know. Mm-hmm. So um it was nothing for me to just, you know, see like-minded individuals that might want to come and, and appreciate something like this. Hey, um, boom, let me hit you up. Let's see what's going on. So that's, that's just my outlook on things, but like you hit it on the nose, like having, having God bless you with a God given ability. And then you do the work yourself. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you do the work that he presented, you know, for you and, and gave you that blessing and you just doing God's work. And I mean, I think that's, a, that's a beautiful thing. So. And, um, and here's something to add on to that. And the reason why I keep bringing up, I may not be the best at it. Like, you know, you have other DJs who may be getting paid, you know, who maybe have a weekly gig. I used to have a weekly gig all the time. But DJs who may be making thousands of dollars a week or traveling all around the country, you know, I could have been in that lane, but there's a, and this is something I want people to definitely remember. There's a reason why God opens and closes doors. It's a reason why I wasn't put in a position to maybe travel all around the world and, uh, you know, or, or, or work at this certain nightclub every week or, do this because maybe I would have had a chance to meet my, my, my wife. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. There, 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 there's reasons why God opens and closes doors. So like I said, I mean, I'd be the best at everything, but people know that I'm going to still hold it down. I'm going to be reliable. I'm going to keep things professional. And, mm-hmm. and, and some always, I used to always say, I always make it happen. That's my thing is making it happen. And that's always been my my mantra. <laughs> my motto, it has been, you know, before Mr. Jack of all trade, before if it ain't smooth, it ain't me, which is one of my taglines. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's, it's make it happen. 
you know, and I, and I yeah. always stick with that, making it happen. And you know, that's all we're here all today, right. man. On, on, on the met. Brian Turner broke of a basketball podcast, baby. There we go, and we're gonna make it happen. Let Let's zoom through these. Uh, I got I got this uh this little highlight for for trending topics real quick. You just let me know your thoughts on this. So, um, you know, just uh, let me see what we were talking about. So. Again, you know, we got the NBA Finals with, uh, well, not the Finals, the Eastern Conference Finals, and I'm kind of just checking some things out. So who who wins the series between uh, Miami and Boston and Dallas and Golden State? What are your thoughts oh, on those? Oh, man. So this is a <laughs> tough one because game one, if you don't know already, Kobe has already entered the uh, the Celtics locker room, Al Horford. He did, he's not playing tonight. Mm-hmm. Uh, injuries have occurred to Marcus Smart. So he's not playing tonight, even though right now I believe the Celtics are up uh, at half. Right. But I feel, man, I don't know. Uh, Tatum is, is is unbelievable right now. He's he's doing this thing. I love how they got, they hired uh, Ime Udoka as the head mm-hmm. coach, and he's just oh, to fight man. all the odds. I just feel that Miami Heat are a are a deeper team. You know, when you have like Chris, I'm mean, not Chris, but um, Jimmy, no, uh, the point Kyle Lowry, he hasn't Lowry. even played a whole lot, and Miami mm-hmm. he has still been winning, right. and and in that culture in Miami is is, yeah. is 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 different, you know what I'm saying? And like you just brought up Jimmy Butler, and you got Tyler Hero and Duncan Robinson coming off the bench, you got Oladipo coming off the bench, you mm-hmm. know, holding things down. They just have a real, real deep team. Oh, it's it's tough, uh, and I don't want to go against Tatum. I may be wrong on this, but I think mm-hmm. I'm gonna say um, Miami gonna win that series. In the West, I did not see the Mavericks beating the Suns. <laughs> when I but, say I was stunned when I saw mm-hmm. what happened in Game Seven, but then you think about it, you know, Chris Paul over the last what ten years he has shown. He has a great start, but he can't finish, you know. No, and it man. happened in the worst time last week <laughs> against Dallas. Mm-hmm. And, so and, and even even yeah, go go ahead, go ahead, because I'm I'm gonna chime in just on on the back of that. Uh, so just to answer your question, Golden State, Dallas. I've I had Golden State going to the finals since the beginning of the season because I I was basing it off of uh Clay. Oh, excuse me, yeah, Clay Thompson coming back, uh James Wiseman coming back but he hasn't at this point but yeah and Steph Curry doing his thing but also when I saw Jordan Poole doing preseason play I'm like this dude is playing different he's playing with a whole different kind of confidence that Golden State needed and then right. you got you know uh the, the other guys uh Lee and Toscano you know you got some 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 young guys in there Otto Porter mm-hmm. I'm like eh Golden State. So I'm gonna say Golden, Golden State is gonna win uh that series. So I have Miami and Golden State. Yeah, no, it's it's funny that you say that because uh, even just talking about organizations and, and winning from the top down. And uh, uh when you look at Miami over those years, it's always been just been a staple at that organizational level of them being constant, having you know a, that winning mentality all the way through. And you don't hear a lot of mess coming out of their organization when it comes to their players. But on the flip side, when you hear the Suns and the turmoil that they're going through with contracts and right. you know uh, certain things disputing this and, and and so it just they a lot of mess comes out at the wrong time, um, yeah. and I think that that you know just like we can talk about it, I'm pretty sure people in the locker room are talking about it on their right. ride home. They talking about it, you know, when they cut their phones on, people talking about it. So for for young teams and have people having young players, that can kind of get to them and. Uh, I just felt like man, it, it caught up with with the Suns on that. So, so you yeah. saying Golden State all the way, which is not a bad. I, hey, look, you can't go wrong with with neither one of these teams, especially down this stretch, because you know Dallas has beat the odds, uh, Boston has beat the odds, knocking off Milwaukee, right? And and just seeing where where these teams are now, man, it, it makes for a good finals. Like uh, whichever team that we get coming out of each each conference, you know, that's and- how I look at. It. And I mean, and like I said, I won't be surprised at all if Boston wins mm-hmm. the series because look uh, at the road they went through from beating Brooklyn, from yeah. beating Milwaukee, the defending champions, 
in the but will they be but will they be beat down? Do you think they'll be beat down by the time because this 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 game, this this series can be a man, this can be a tough one. This might go that's, seven. That's These guys seven. get knocked around. Just that's a game seven of uh um, excuse me, a, a seven game series, should I say? And then you think about it, those two teams played in the bubble a couple of years ago, and uh Boston had them in a series, and then Miami came back, I believe, and then took the series away from, from Boston. So Boston was always going to the finals two years ago. Right. And 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 Miami said, nah. So that may be a whole other element for Boston, especially for Tatum, because remember uh, uh Bam Adebayo did that block on Tatum for that dunk mm-hmm. a couple of years ago yeah. in the bubble. So it's definitely personal. And like I said, I won't be surprised if Boston wins, but I just really feel like Miami, because of of their of their depth, is going to be uh, the reason why they win that series. But, you know, it should be a great series. I look forward to it. Uh, it looks like right now the Celtics are up 60, excuse me, 62 to 54 over the heat right now I have. So definitely shall see, man. I'm excited. Yeah, so so and then I, I got a few other, just some, some shenanigans. And, and, and I mean – no, so so one thing you know we we had the Mayday Parade this this uh this Sunday this past and I just remember just time in times past how the Mayday Parade has always been you know uh, a kickoff I would say to you know the summertime and um you know reports came out that you know all of this craziness shootings and violence happening around surrounding around the Mayday Parade uh, all of this that that craziness. Um, and just seeing uh, seeing the reports on certain things that happen, and so I got a chance to look at a uh, uh, cut on TMZ. Are you familiar with this Freddie Gibbs Benny the Butcher fight, or are you are you have you heard anything about this, or do you even know who these guys are? I've heard of the guys, but I didn't see, any, I haven't heard any like recent things about them or seen the video. So what happened? Yeah, I mean, it's just man, just some mess, some foolishness oh, that man. I just you know you know people. Uh, and I don't, I don't, I don't like, you know, uh, piggybacking off one. Even like we need to talk about the Mayday Parade and then talking about mm-hmm. the the rappers into it. But you know, it seems like a common thing once it starts to heat up, getting outside, more parties, more concerts. Man. It just leaves more opportunities for foolishness to happen. And, and it is so frustrating, man. It it mm-hmm. really is. And I, I'm glad you brought it up because just before you got at me about um, getting on to log on tonight for the show. There was a lady that left a post, and it was a video, and it's on, it's on Facebook now. It's a video mm-hmm. of this woman or this young girl on top of a truck, twerking on top of the truck in front of all kids and whatever else. This is smack dab right downtown. And this yeah. woman got on top of the truck and started twerking, and she had on these little you know, booty shorts, so she's showing cheeks and everything. And you heard the lady on the video in the background you doing this? You doing this from the kids and from the children? So it's like these. This generation is 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 simply lost, and it needs to be addressed more. This generation, mm-hmm. the, this youth, they have no direction. They have no sense of 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 respectability. It's really been lost in our community, and it is really sad. You know, it's and of course you want to pray for the you know for these kids to find direction. But it all starts at home as well, <laughs> right. yeah, nah. but because I, you think about it, that 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 young lady who was twerking on the on the chair, you know, more than likely her upbringing probably has her being that way because she hasn't been told, hey, we don't allow this, you know. Like I tell my daughter, you know, I I have a six year old daughter, you know, and See? I'm like, hey, you are a representation, you know, you are Saunders. You know, mm-hmm. this year you don't do this, you don't do that, and, and I stay on her as a father because first you need to have that in your life. You know, to have two parents, and then to have my wife, who's been just a, uh, <laughs> she's just been more than a stepmom. I mean, she's just been a, a wonderful influence into my baby girl's life. Uh, mm-hmm. But and she has a, a non non for profit organization called Girls for Life. So she she's all about having young girls to be a part of a foundation where you can learn how to grow to be a woman, how to have men, how to know how to walk with posture and stuff like that. So Girls for Life, make sure y'all follow that. Uh, follow her, uh, girlsforlife.com, Girls for Life on Facebook. Shout out to your wife, you love you. But anyway, yeah. going back, 
No, uh, no, that's 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 real talk because I've been pushing this whole uh uh lately just man man hashtag manning up hashtag fathers are needed because um just exactly what, what you just said, man. It, it starts at home. And at home. you at, at some point, you have to be the change that you want to see happen. And it's like, you can't be, you know, saying one thing and then doing something else. And that's, I try to drive that type of stuff home to my team all of the time. You know, I'm at an all boys school. And, and a lot of times it's, you know, uh, like we just got to talk about like image. Im- image means so much. It's like, it's, it's, it's what people are going to say once you, you know, once you come in a presence is people, what, what, what people are going to say once you leave them. And so you want to be able to be the best version of yourself every time you come in contact with somebody. And a lot of times that's kind of hard to push off to, to, to this generation because, you know, they don't, they may not see it five years down the line, 10 years down the line, and even start putting in a mindset, what does legacy look like? If I have a child, you know, what are people going to say about when they see my child based on how I, I used to act or mm-hmm. what people used to say about me? You know what I mean? So, you know, a lot of times people may look at uh, uh, the fruit of the tree and you really have to examine the root of the tree. You know what I mean? Right. So right. that's and that's what I see. Yeah. Uh, with that being said, that's why I had to uh, give a big shout out to my mom, because she was someone that I feared when I was young. Uh. I didn't want to be, go home and have her found out that I did something that I shouldn't be doing because I knew I'd be in trouble and I knew I'd feel it. And that's what needs to happen nowadays with these, with this, uh, with the youth, is that they need to fear their parents. And I feel like parents nowadays are being more of a best friend Talk than, about a, than a parental figure, and that's why these kids are out here just wilding out, doing whatever, being, you know, like like you said, in the Mayday Parade, I think that night uh, someone got shot and all these kids all around downtown riding on scooters in between traffic. On a Sunday night when school, you know, school no the next day. No direction, no sense of careness, anything. So you have your parents being your best friend, but be, even before that, you're allowing the devil to take over you because you are on folks and are on, on God. You're not, you're not, you're not praying. You're not going to church. You're not believing in, in, in God. So now you're allowing the devil to just take advantage of you being open to whatever. And it shows with your actions. So you have that going on. And once again, you don't fear your parents because probably more than likely your parents are, or are, are, are not together or, they're not instilling anything in you. They're not bringing any fear, you know, in you, nothing. So you have no direction. So it's like, well, I'm just do whatever. I'm a, I'm gonna be grown when you're not grown. Then you then you have kids when you're 15, 16 years old. So you're a kid trying to raise a kid. It's, it's young so, grandmamas, grandmamas I mean, young, grandma's thirty five years old. Right. So it's like. You know, first of all, you're not even enjoying being the kid. Mm-hmm. You know, right. you know, I, I say this to past guests all the time, but I used to go outside in your neighborhood and just be a kid and play all day. Now you got to worry, worry about going outside and getting shot. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you back then, and, and you bought the made a parade. I and I told my wife this the other day. I really never was one to go to a Mayday Parade because as much as I heard how it was cool for the community, but you know what else I heard? Man. A lot of violence. A lot of violence. And it, it always happened around Beaumont area. You know? It always Look, I, that's, that's what I was just going to say. I'm, I'm in it when I'm really not supposed to be in it. So it's like yeah. when you walk outside, you technically in it. And it ends at Beaumont. It ends at uh, the the steps of Beaumont, or well, used to in at the steps of Beaumont, and then after it's over, all of these different you know sets, gangs, everybody's just uh-huh. in the neighborhood, and before you know it, somebody didn't got shot, somebody yeah. didn't got hurt, and, or and, you know, and, and, and people are probably saying, "Well, you went to the V," and 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 that was separated me from a lot of people, because even if you look at the episode with Russell Arms and other people like the White Whitfield, you know. A lot of people knew, yeah, I went to the V, but I didn't have that same mentality like other people who went who went to the V who were just there for just just to be there or whatever. No, 
my mom made sure and she instilled in me when you in school, it's about you being uh being in them books. <laughs> uh my goal was to be a student athlete, and that's what I was. You know, right. I had a lot of accolades my senior year, you know, honor society this and leadership compact team this and uh getting scholarships or getting money from corporations because of what I did in school. You know, mm -hmm. I took pride in that. You know, I had a 3.3. .3. I was the the highest rated male all four years at, at the V. I took pride in that. Oh, exactly. I took <laughs> I took pride in that because I knew that that's what my family, you know, was all about too. And, and that's how my mom raised me. She was on me about uh about my, my grade because if I didn't have good grades, I couldn't play, you know. So I didn't want to go home and, and face the wrath of, of my mom because when she gets mad, oh, it's a wrap. And and like, like I said, that's what's lacking now. But in regards to just myself, uh, yeah, I was different. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't cuss in high school. You know, first I came from a Christian school, uh, not saying that, that 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 was perfect, but it just felt weird for me to just even try to think of a cuss word. You know, I, I just right. wasn't like that. Like the person you see now, <laughs> like mm -hmm. the DJ and the party, you know, whatever. Uh, you can ask the people in my class; they would have never seen this part of me, you know, now, mm -hmm. you know, having, having two kids and so my son, he, he, he about to be 21 in September, you know, mm -hmm. baby girl is, is six. I'm me being married and, and everything. Uh, not saying Mary was, was going to be something, but just in regards to just how I am now. Right. You know, I was totally different back in high school because I didn't want to put myself in a position. And, and this is what people don't realize now. Don't put yourself in a position where you're not going to be able to enjoy high school. Right. You know, like mm -hmm. my, my first day in high school, <laughs> I look, I, I step in first, we have metal detectors. Then we go in on the left-hand side, you have a long hallway. And one of the first things you saw on the left-hand side was a daycare. So you had freshman girls, sophomore girls, you know, 15, 16 year old girls having to drop off their children at daycare already. Like you just smack dab getting into high school and you already know more about sex than a 30 year old person. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that's, yeah. that's not no, where it, that's, it, that's not where it should be. But that's, that was what I was going through, uh, you know, at the V, but I want to make sure, and this goes back to what I'm doing now. I want to have my own lane. I wasn't trying to be like everybody else. Oh, because I went to the V, I'm going to start being in fights. I never got into a fight. I never got into an altercation with mm -hmm. no one all four years. People knew that I was a respectful guy. People thought I was a senior when I was a freshman. Like, like right. I, I, I dated a senior when I was a freshman because it just of, of, of my upbringing and how my mom raised me and how mature. And I was just going to say your, your aura give off that of, of maturity of, 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 right. of regal of stature right. that, you know, not, ain't, ain't, ain't no games being played. And, and that's kind of wow. speaks to even kind of the, the transition of one I want to try to lead into was the, the fact of a uh, quality parenting, because just like what you just said, just being cautious of just like not cursing, not cursing around your kids. And and I had another part is that what are your thoughts on Christian rap? Because when I Man. say when I this is something, hold on, let me be because if we can look, this was a whole nother lane. And for the yeah. folks that are listening, I, I I just if you just take the time out to turn whatever station that you listen to, if you listen to hip hop. Man, turn on, I think it's if it's 95.5 and just give it, give it a ride. Take your kids to school, give it a ride, and then tell me what you think, whether if it's in the comments, on the text, even anything that you can give, get at me, and tell me what you think it is. Because when I say that, this opened my eyes to a whole new world of me playing music in a car with my child. That I'm just like, this is what's missing out here. Like, if we like the beat. And we like the trap beats or we, cause that's all the kids listening to anyway is the right, beat right, and right. dancing to the beat. But it's so many of these demonic uh, uh, lyrics that are put over these instrumentals Terrible. that it, it take, it takes, you know, it takes the culture it takes the community in a whole nother thought process that if you, if you put some inspirational stuff, medicine into that music that, and, and you get what, what we, what we 
listening to on, on the Christian rap station. Mm-hmm. Man, that stuff's so dope. So tell me when did you stumble on that and what you what do you think about that? Your thoughts on that? All right. So you ready for another bombshell? Go ahead. Christian hip hop right now is better than hip hop. Period. Uh hey. so you ain't got few, no arguments with me on that. A few months ago. I was online. Now, my wife, she's been telling me, you know, that she's been to a, a Kirk Franklin concert in the past. And I've never been to a, a gospel concert before. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she went to Kirk Franklin. She's seen, uh, I think, Fred Hammond. Uh, I think she actually sung uh, in her choir back when she was at Friendly Temple. Uh, Fred, Fred Hammond and other, you know, major artists sung at the church and she's the same behind them. But mm-hmm. she was like, man, Kirk Franklin's show. It is amazing. I'm like, you know, I gotta go to a gospel concert. So something came across my my phone and it was a concert with uh uh Lecrae. Mm-hmm. And then I didn't really know know this guy until I started hearing his song, but Andy oh, Minio, man. you know, coming in hot. Oh man. So so it was Lecrae, Andy Minio, uh uh KB. Wanda, all them, their, their whole crew came to um, what's that church called? First, uh, first, first, uh, uh, because I was trying to go when I saw that you posted and yeah, that you was yeah, there. Yeah. We had already been talking about that. I'm like, man, I missed it. Man. Was it was the Faith uh, Church? I think Faith. Yeah, Faith Church. Yeah, that is yeah. was it the one in in South in South County? Yeah. Yep, Gravel Boys. Okay. Yep, off Gravel so, Boys. So, uh, I only knew a few, you know. The Cray songs, and I only knew a few. No, I only knew just one in the Minio song. But okay. that concert was, and we had front row seats. We had, I, I gave her the VIP treatment. Like I spent money because you, you know I want her to, be, I want her to experience everything from the Q and A session to meeting them in the back and shaking hands, and you know you, you saw the video I had. We yeah, all nah, dancing, that was dope, man. You know. They are everything as good as what you hear from Drake, Moneybag, Yo, Yo Gotti, whatever. Travis Scott. All them. They are just good because the message is even better than what you hear in rap. And yeah. <laughs> the 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 beats, uh, the the excitement, the performance. I mean, I was captivated. And like I said, I only knew maybe one or two songs, but I, I left out with a whole different appreciation. And I got to give a shout out to like back in the day you had Trinity 316, you know, so yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, always yeah. been there. Uh, even pretty really, you know, he, he transformed his life around. Look what yeah. he's doing now with, in, in, with the gospel station. And like his whole career came from lay your body down to now what he's doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you can't tell me God can't, can't, can't make things happen for you. You know, as long yeah. as you continue to do what, what, uh, he wants you to do, you know, continue just to pe- put him first and allow other people to see the God in you. So I have to marry Mary. But uh, it, 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 it's just amazing about what you can do, you know, and, and hip hop gospel. Cause I asked during the Q and a session, I asked Andy Minio and, and, and Lecrae, I was like, you're going to have people out there. That's going to be hating on what y'all doing because it sounds similar to you know drake or it sounds similar to kind you know whatever and then uh lecrae was like shoot they sound like us and i'm like yeah, nah, that's real like facts and then any Minio was like hey <clears throat> you, you're going to have your haters you know people are going to find a way that's on them but after i saw that show when I say not saying that I didn't do it before, because I, I love gospel music. Uh, gospel music is is a beautiful thing. I love it. It just gives me a different feeling, a different energy than, than any other music can do. So I love gospel music, but I definitely incorporated more gospel with hip hop more than I had before after that concert. And my wife, she was blown away by the experience because she knew about Andy Minio. She knew about you know, you know. So, so this was kind of her first introduction to it, on on just hearing it from that side of the hip hop, and it sounding similar to, like mm-hmm. like when I play it, a lot of people thinking that oh man he's snapping man who is that? 
don't even know that it's Christian rap, you know? And right. that's what I'm like, look, that's how they, that's how they get you is, right. you know, you put some on and it's the beat is bumping it. And I'm like, that's, that's all that matters. If, if folks like the beat, then you sneak that little message in there, but let exactly. that message be something powerful, you know, inspirational with, 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 you know, you putting with, with God in it, you putting, you know, faith in it because that's a lot of times it's like, you know, people, they, uh, they engineer the music to give you a feeling, but it's supposed it gives you a feeling towards doing something negative and not doing something positive. And, and that's and why like, I like that. And like for instance, going back to the 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 female artist one day, uh she has yeah. uh her her performance was amazing. And like she was dancing, her and her girl was dancing on stage, and my wife, she loves to dance. Like she she loves to perform. So she could relate to them. So mm-hmm. you can do your dancing and not twerking, ladies. You can right. do your dancing, you know, and and, and still do, you know do your hey, you know, hey. Yeah. But, you, but you you ain't got to twerk, but and, but you can also bring a, a great message in which one day did that, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other artist, he he, he was like a, a gospel Quavo. That's how he sounds. Yeah, no, nah, man. I, I mean, I look. I know. I, I ain't gonna say I know a lot of, but I got a playlist. Yeah, like my playlist plays like all of that stuff and then like I said me and my son he he never I mean he will have me put on like one over not no no shouts to I mean not not no disses to all of the other hip hop stations but he had me play something and then he'd be like oh no I ain't feeling that I put on that station oh man singing right. humming got nice melodies the beat bumping hey, and I it's mean, something I- that you you're not embarrassed to sing out when you around folks you know right, you hum a right. melody you're not embarrassed to say that, but you listen to some other music, you like, man, why did I just say that? And then it's like, how many times do we have to hear about, you know, how much money you have or, exactly. you know, this, this whole toxicity of uh, uh, of a man trying to take another man's girlfriend or wife? What, what kind of man are you to to want to rap and brag about, you know, Trey Songs, Mrs. To Your Girl? That's not mature. <laughs> That's not... Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Being a real man. You know what I'm saying? That's just bringing toxic, you know, toxicity into people's minds. And then they bring it out there to clubs. And then you get these fights and shootings. Brings it out to uh, to people's marriages. And then they having issues. It's like, you know, not saying I, I'm hating on, on all the rappers. <laughs> you know, you have rappers who, you know, I, like I love Jay-Z. He, he's my favorite rapper. You know what I'm it saying? It has to be a appropriate though smooth right. like that's the thing right. it has to be right. what we going through right now 40 and, years you know, old hell, i'm a dj <laughs> you know what i'm saying exactly. so I, I have to I, I hear it and a certain song you just be like okay you know we need a certain set and you want to hear it because it just makes you you know get you know just turn up a little bit but like even when i'm djing events i don't really play a lot of this like certain rappers because it it, it it doesn't do anything you know what i'm saying for me a, ele- a different type of element to where your function or whatever that you have. Right, you bring right. Bring that already in there. Right. So, you know, I may speak on a little bit of this, but, like, I, I don't play Kodak Black, you know? I don't play, what? you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't play little, you know, whatever this. So, you know, if if, if it's a, a nice, cooler song, I, I may play a little bit, but, you know, and that's why I kind of fell back on certain gigs I do because I don't right. want to cater to that kind of crowd no more. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I'm on a whole different level now. You know, I, I've done this for over 10 years in regards to DJing. So I've been there. I've done it. I've, I've DJ at clubs on a weekly basis or, you know, this hot spot, whatever. I've done that. So now I'm on a whole different kind of vibe, different wave. I'm staying in my own lane on, on, what, on what makes me happy. You know what I'm saying? Because if you don't do what makes you happy, you're not going to enjoy doing it. You know what I'm saying? So right, it's all nah. about it's all about growth. So just going back to music and gospel, like my wife played this song and I heard it before, but she played it again like last week after we left church. And this uh and it's called Jesus Will. It is by Anita. Uh hold on. Let, let, let me get her her uh her whole name. I'm gonna give her a shout out real quick because I play this song all the time. Uh here we go. Her name is uh, Anita Wilson. Jesus will. And I play that song pretty much every day now. That song gets me going. I even played it at church because now going back to real quick about church. 
I'm a uh, uh, you see my cameras I have, you know, the Mevo I have for the, for the, you know, for the live stream. I presented that to my church. So now we use Mevo cameras for our live streams. And okay. like our whole denomination is like, man, y'all church services are like the best thing we seen. I love what y'all doing. How do y'all do that? You know, this is what mm-hmm. I present to church because I feel like this would be the best way to really have our church be different from everybody else you know mm-hmm. now a lot of people are like asking us how y'all do that how, y- how y'all do this i presented a new sound system for our church that's more convenient so now we don't have to go to the back to adjust levels i can go right on my tablet or my phone and adjust levels so now it makes you know everyone's job easier so through the grace of god i've been able to really uh, get the church more to the 2020 right. era yeah. and back in how it was in 19, you know, 85, you know, just the things had to change. And I, I thank God for my pastor, you know, Reverend Anthony, R- uh, Anthony Ritherspoon for trusting in my vision and my belief of just making things better for everyone. Right. You know, it was Update, up, updating the system, just like any, right. just like right. this, these you know? software or phones may need an update. Right. Right. Certain things need an update, you know, because back then we would have the church service, but it'll be recorded, and then Richie would upload it after the service so people can watch it later on. But yeah. now we're able to have it live stream, and mm-hmm. people from different states, different countries can tune in and watch and be like, "Man, I love what y'all doing with the service. Like this is really good. I want to get on that same level of what y'all doing." So. It, it just, God just put me in a position to say, you know what, don't just do it for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Do it for others, you know? Uh, oh. So it, it's it, it just amazing. And then uh, just going back to, once again, about the music and everything, uh, playing Jesus Will, I play that all the time. So this past Sunday, uh, before service, I always like to play songs uh, from my, uh, my Bluetooth, uh, my tablet, doing a church speaker before the actual service start just to kind of get everyone's you know get everyone right. ready for the service and get everyone in the spirit you know so i'm mm-hmm. playing jesus will and with the choir we all singing the song and a boy yeah. keith you know shouts out to keith he uh the uh our uh keyboardist and everything on the organ you know he playing a little bit and he said i'm seeing people in the church just bobbing their head and singing because that's what you know is it, happiness that's what gospel music is whether it's hip hop, whether it's it just it's just gospel singing, it's just a different feel than anything that hip hop can do. And then guess what? I had a gig uh this past uh Sunday. And I implemented coming in hot, doing the mix. Mm-hmm. Everyone was getting it, you know. And my last song, I said this is my last song tonight before I leave. I had to play this song because without him. When I would not be here, and this would not be possible. It was a, a, a young lady's graduation. Her and her daughter, her uh, the mother graduated from college. The daughter graduated from high school. I mm-hmm. said, this wouldn't be possible without the Lord being there for him. And I played Jesus' will. And everyone was just, you know, dancing and, you know, whatever. So I just got the music overall. Right. Yeah, here we go. Uh-huh. Music overall, <laughs> man. It is... It's, it's better than yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to add, I'm gonna have to add that one, man. man see, yes. that's why I had put this up here, man. You you done helped us to sub, man, as far as got hey, uh, I, I play that song every day and and I don't know if you heard it yet, but my wife, she always plays um what is it, Maverick City, uh what is it called? Oh uh, Lord, uh, uh, Gyra. Look that up, Maverick City, Gyra. She plays that song pretty much every day, definitely every Sunday, either before. Oh, okay. the church. With, uh, 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 Chan- Chandler Moore. Yeah, yeah. That Elevation song. Worship. Yep, yep. So Gyra, it's like it's a nine minute song, but it's beautiful. Uh, I think matter of fact, Jesus Will is nine minutes too, but it's worth it. Like be the best nine minutes of your life, and then uh, she also plays Sunday morning, uh, Lecrae, Kirk Franklin, those songs there, man. 
when I say whatever kind of mood you in, you play them songs, your mood is gonna change right See, away. And so, and, and so, and for for my listeners out there, whether if it's you know my young folks, my eighteen to twenty four, man, sometimes you got to just get in your car, man, and cut that hip hop off, man, and, and put some gospel on, man, and let it just minister to your soul. And and you start to just man, just it's gonna open you up to so many different blessings and so many different things because, you know, you may not even be looking for certain blessings, but you got that spirit and you walking around feeling good and everything, man. You never know what'll come your way. So oh, man, it's this movie. It's been out a few years now, but I seen it, and it also changed my life too. It gave me a different perspective. It's called uh, War Room. You it's say called War Room. Yes, it's called War Room. It's about this 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 lady who's been going through so many different things in her life, from her relationships to her job to whatever's going on in the world. But in her house, she was told by someone to uh, pretty much like make a room in her house where she would just close the door. And she would just have like a Bible and she'll have some kind of inspirational thing on, on her wall. And it'd be like her room to just to scream out or to read the word, just to mm-hmm. block out everything else. But just to have that one room in that house where it's all about you just giving praise, crying out to the Lord, whatever your problems is, you bring it into that war room. But and you just focus on on God, you know, what I'm saying. Uh, not not in your bathroom, not in your whatever. Not, like she had like a closet that she pretty much changed to be her, her her war room. And I would definitely advise for those, watch the movie because it's mm-hmm. definitely uplifting. It's called War Room. It came out maybe about 2015 or 16, something like that. But definitely check out that movie. It was definitely inspiring because it, it, once again, it blocks blocks out everything else in the world. You go through this room for an hour or two, whatever it is. Read the word, uh, play gospel music, whatever it is that you need to have in regards to having the Lord, you know, with you uh, in that room and praising the Lord. It's gonna, it'll change your life. So war room. Check it out. Check it out, man. So smooth, man. I appreciate you, man, man, for taking this time out, man. We got, man, games on. Yeah, stuff going on. Man, I, I, I enjoy the conversation. It's true, man, man, I, man. Look, I enjoy this, man. We we've been going strong, man. We we got to pick this up and definitely make this oh, important yeah, too. Man. But um, we got uh, we got the man cave coming coming next Wednesday. Next so uh, uh, make sure that the folks that are chiming in that are or, or, or watching this video, make sure that you uh, like, subscribe to the platform, uh, sports talk show, um, and hit is. up man DJ Smooth. Man, for any type of gigs that you got going on, well, what else you got going on? We'll give out all your, your smooth, info. Smoothproductions.com, y'all. Smooth the three O's. Just everything you need to know. Prices. Uh, you can book everything right there if you need in person or virtual. I got you. There's no man, limit. Man, graduation parties, man. Birthday parties, man. Uh, uh, holiday parties, man. Hit that man up. I got you, man. And uh, just want to give a shout out to, to you once again, man, for having me on the show and for the success of your podcast. Shouts out to everyone who has been a part of the platform, Sports Talk Show family, man. Uh, Sadal, Stan, Bunny, Joe, to the Man Cave, uh, you, T-Bone. Brendan, Joe's uh, husband, and then, uh, of course, Ladies Night, Michaela McGee, Miss Missouri, Andy Greer, Sharita, who you did uh, a show, a wrestling show with her. Oh, man, we got to pick that back up because we yeah. ain't even had a chance to talk about wrestling, but we definitely going to pick that up on the man. Oh, camp, yeah, so. yeah. So, hey, part two of of uh, Brian Turner and, and, and your boy, you know, coming very soon, man. I, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, but yeah, once again, Michaela McGee, uh, Annie. Sharita, so shouts out to everyone who has been a part of the platform sports talk show. My vision, uh, my baby, my love, my passion, bigger things ahead. Uh, we're gonna be doing a show not tomorrow because I have a prior engagement. So we're gonna be doing the show uh live this Thursday. So check us out. Follow the platform sports talk show on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, uh, Roku. 
And we're on Hot 365 Radio as well. Download the app, Hot 365 Radio, or go online, hot365radio.com, where it's always hot. So, trying to stay busy, man. I always say, if I ain't busy, I ain't doing my thing. <laughs>